want to we want to get into the Word of God this morning. And uh, you know, we are uh, trying this live stream thing. Evidently, last week it kicked out right after worship. But as far as I know, we're still live streaming, and they can see all of you in this area right here. So can you turn around and just wave back that direction and, and let them know that, yeah. I, I don't know how many we got up to on viewers that were viewing this morning. I think it was 13 to 15, somewhere in that area that people were watching uh, during the praise and worship. And uh, 20. 20? 20 people, okay. So um, I don't know who's watching it. I have no clue. But, hey, awesome, right? And, uh, yeah, we, uh, we're just glad that they're getting to, to be a part of this if they can't be a part of it, right? All right. Well, we're going to get into the Word of God this morning. Uh, the, the thing that we uh, talked about last week, with, uh, we looked at the, the failure of Peter and, and how he had denied Christ three times, that, that whole uh, thing that he went through and how many times... Do we end up doing the same thing? And, and we, we were talking about how, in, how, to, how to fall right, learning how to fall. And, and whenever we fail, that God is right there to pick us back up. That no matter how hard we splat on our face, he, He's right there. I, I, I remember this picture. I, I can't remember who sent it to us. But they actually sent it to my wife. Yeah, and it's got this picture of this guy on the ground. He's just sprawled out. And he's like, I didn't fall. The ground needed a hug. And it, I think it was Don Harmon that sent it to my wife, and it was, it's so appropriate, you know, because that is totally my wife. She knows how to fall. But uh, in, in that, uh, knowing how to fall, learning how to fall correctly, it, it's all about getting back up. Amen? Amen? And no matter how far you fall, and no matter how bad the, 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 the situation has been that you've got yourself in the middle of, all we have to do is cry out to Jesus. Call out to Jesus, and He will pick us right back up. And, and, and today, I just want to take you to uh, Luke's Gospel in the fifth chapter. And we'll be in the first 11 verses, but as you're turning there and, and you find that, if you don't have a Bible, it will be on the screen. But uh, would you join me in a word of prayer for this, this word today? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would be here to, to bring revelation knowledge of your word today. Lord, we pray that you'd anoint our ears to hear the message that you have for us. That it would go into our, that it would come into our hearts and that it would change us forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beginning in the first verse, it says, One day, in Luke chapter 5, One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to him, listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. Now, stop right there just for a second. The, the, he's, he, this is very early on in Jesus' ministry. He's just started, basically just broke out into his public ministry. He doesn't have, he, he don't have the followers yet. He don't have all the, the disciples trailing around him, any of that stuff yet. And people have seen his, these miracles that he's done. He's been to a guy named Simon's house. You, you may be familiar with Simon. He's the same Simon that we know as Peter, that would later become the same Peter that would deny him, the same Peter that would stand up under the anointing of the Holy Spirit after that denial and preach one of the best gospel messages ever as 3,000 plus people come to know the Lord that day. I mean, that, that, that Peter, that, that's this guy, Simon. He's been to his house. He's prayed for Simon's mother-in-law. She was sick. Uh, he, he came to the house there where he was at, heals the lady. But Simon isn't a follower yet. He, he's, he saw what he did for the mother-in-law, and it was, it was a good thing because if you go back and read that, that, case, that, that instance where Jesus did this, it says that he, you know, she's laying there sick. He goes and prays for her, and it says then she gets up, and she makes them food. So, I mean, that's a plus, right? I mean, he, he, evidently nobody else in the house was cooking. So had she not been healed, they would have been in a mess. But he, Peter saw this happen. And Jesus just happens to be going to this area. People are coming around. They want to hear, they want to hear who this Jesus guy is. Everybody's buzzing about who he is. And, and as he walks out to the, to the shore and there's a hill there, and the people have gathered in that area, well, there just happens to be. You know, nothing is by coincidence. You were not here by accident today. 
You are not. Today is meant to be a day of a divine encounter with your God and you today. Amen. And you can sit there and you can say, well, I just can't because this guy asked me. But that guy asked you because God told him to and you said yes because you couldn't get out of it. Amen. But you're here. Because God has a purpose. And there just happened to be this crowd of people that came that day. And there just happens to be two boats with some fishermen who have been out all night. All night they've been out fishing. And, and they're, they're washing their nets. And you know how much they've caught today? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, it, there's nothing worse than having to work nights than having to work nights when you're not getting paid for it, right? Man. Not a good situation. But these guys... Just happen to have these boats. He just calls them, there's some fishers, fishermen there. Just, just, just happen to be around, right? They're washing their nets. Verse 3. He got into one of the boats. Just happens out there, right? Just, he's like, I need a place to stand. I'll get in a boat. He goes out, just gets in one of their boats. Left there by the fishermen. So he gets in one of the boats. The one belonging to, oh, just random. This random guy who just happens to be named Simon. So he just happens to randomly go over and step into Simon's boat. So immediately you can kind of imagine Simon's like, man, if you hadn't just, you know, worked that miracle with my mother-in-law, I'd be telling you, get out of my boat. But you did it, so you, you, I'll let you stay in my boat. And, and asked him to put out a little from shore. So he gets out there. They go out into the water. And Peter asks him to, 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 to take him out there a little bit so he can stand and teach and everybody can see him. So that, that's kind of what they're doing. And, and then... Put out a little to the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. You ever heard of a captive audience? That was Simon that day. That was Simon. Jesus gets in his boat and says, hey, take me out there a little bit. I, I, I gotta, I'm going to teach these people. So Simon rose out there and he's sitting in the boat and Jesus is talking. Kind of that awkward moment when you're like, man... You know, I'm really tired. You know, if I start to doze off right now, everybody's going to see it. Everybody's going to know. But no, he's getting, he, he's right there next to Jesus. Jesus is there. He's with him. They, they, it, it's just this tremendous, uh, he's that close to Jesus. And Jesus begins to teach. And, and, and he's teaching the people from the boat. And, and Peter's right there. And he says, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water. And let down your nets for a catch. Now, Peter has been fishing all night. He's tired. He's worn out. I'm going to tell you, you, know, you, when your greatest encounters are going to happen, are going to happen when you're tired and when you're worn out. Because God ain't looking for lazy people. You know that? You know, they got people that'll just sit there and do nothing with all of their, and, and the, they're, they're sitting at home watching TV and they're like, I want to be used by God. But this show is good. I'm so into this show that I'm, I, I hope God comes quick. I hope he calls me as they put up their lazy boy, you know, the, the footrest on their lazy boy and their kickback. Man, I'd love to be used by God. No, God is looking for people who are already doing something. He, he doesn't need lazy people. We, we got enough lazy people, okay? He, we, he's not looking for lazy people. He's looking for people that are willing. People that will do. People that will go. And you want to be used by God? Hey, get up off your feet and go meet him somewhere. Get out there and get to work. He, he doesn't just, he, 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 we, we want to see revivals happen in our churches a lot of times. We, we, we want to see a revival break out in our, in our churches. And we want to see people come to know the Lord. But the problem is we think as long as they know where we're at. So we'll, we'll just stay here and wait for them to come. Well, guess who's not going to come? Them. Why would they come? It's because somebody goes out there and they annoy them by asking them, hey, you want to go to church with me? Amen. How's your life with Jesus looking? If, if you were to die tonight, where would you go? Asking the difficult questions. And then they'll come. But they're not going to come just because, hey, we got this good little club going. God's looking for people that'll go. People that are busy. People that are doing things. And you, you, you ever been on your way somewhere and you see that homeless guy and you're just like, oh, no. Somebody breaks down on the side of the road and you're like, but the movie's starting 15 minutes. 
that guy's got a flat tire. I could help you. God say, why don't you pull over and help that guy? Because the movie starts in 50 minutes, God. You knew this when I left the house. And we start coming up all the... We're too busy for God. He's looking for busy people, but you got to stop. you got to put on the brakes whenever he shows you the opportunity. Peter, he, he tells Peter, put out to the deep water and drop your net. He said, because... This is Jesus. And look how Peter responds. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. I don't know if he was doing it just to prove God wrong. If he's just like, okay, Jesus, you want me to do this? I'll, I'll throw the net in the water. I can almost imagine just tossing that net in the water, starting to pull it back out, and be this ain't going to work. You ever told God that? God, this ain't going to work. I tell you, I, this microphone. I couldn't get it to mess up yesterday. But... He, put, he gets out into the deep, throws his net. I can almost imagine, you. well, you said to do it, I'll do it half-heartedly. And he throws that net out into the water. But you know what? When God tells you to do something, we're told that every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, that we live according to that, that the word of God will not return empty or void. It, 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 every time that the word of God goes out, it comes back and it does something. And because he goes out there going, man, God, Jesus, you, you said you want me to go throw this net. But I've been out here all night. I've worked hard. I'm tired. I want to go home. And he says, no, no, no. Just, just trust me. Go out, drop the net. He drops the net. He puts the net in the water. He starts to pull it back. back. And, and you, can't you just imagine, like, okay, he's out there by himself now. So he ain't, he ain't getting a whole lot of, you know, he ain't expecting much to happen. He throws it out there, and he starts to pull it up, and suddenly it's full of fish. Full of fish. As he's pulling it back in, he's got he's to stop. He, he, he motions for his partners. These two guys named James and John, you know, you, 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 the, the sons of Zebedee. That, that's, that was the other guy's boat. And I bet they're, they're watching this and they're like, man, how come it couldn't have been our boat? But they get out there and they start helping Pete drag this stuff in. They're getting the fish in, dragging it into the boat and getting it back to the shore. Man, the payday hit. So many times we go through life trying to make our payday hit. Trying to make our, our way work. And, and we're working our fingers to the bone. Trying to make the, get the almighty dollar. I just need a little bit more. If I can just get a little bit more. If I just got this raise. If I can just get this. If I can just get that. And it never pays off. And then suddenly. You have an encounter with Jesus. And the craziest of all things happens. And he tells you go back and do it again. One more time. One more time. Remember the children of Israel as they're marching around a place called Jericho. Seven days they're marching. One time for seven days, we're going to march around this city and God's going to give it into our hands. So they go out there uh, acting like a bunch of crazy religious lunatics. I mean, just imagine what that would have looked like. You got an army inside of a fortress and you're walking around outside. God's going to give it to me. God's going to give it to me for seven days. And on the seventh day, they walk around it seven times. And that, can you imagine lap number six? As they're walking around this and people start to think, man, as they're being ridiculed from the top of a wall, how is this going to work? How is this making any sense? How is God going to do? Why are we walking around this place? And he tells them, take one more lap. But he, he, he also told them, don't, don't make a sound. Don't talk to one another. Because if they could have talked to one another, I think they would have talked each other out of it. Amen. So they're going, they're, they're just marching around this place on a word from God, hoping that this last time, whenever you walk around that seventh time, when you get through, shout and blow the trumpets. And on that seventh time, that seventh lap, they come back around and they blow the trumpets. I, you think all of them knew what was going to happen? No, they just had a word from God. And they walk around, they blow the trumpets. The walls start falling down. 
I remember growing up in church and we used to have these, what they call, uh, we were Pentecostal, man. We'd have what we call Jericho marches. But we were inside the church. And then people get all excited and woo! They take off, they grab somebody, drag them up, and they start walking around the church. Come on, everyone, come on! And it's just like, what's this going to do? We're going to look like a bunch of lunatics. I hope nobody new comes in because they're going to walk right back out. But that's what we were doing. And they, say, they tell me, this is a Jericho march. I'm like, that didn't end well for the people inside of the walls. The walls fell down, killing people. We don't want these walls to fall. But, of course, it was a spiritual thing that they were doing. And, yeah, I, I, you're not going to see me on too many of those, I'm going to tell you. But as Pete's out there, Peter's in the boat with Jesus, and he says, one more time. Dip your nets one more time. Cast that net one more. Trust me. Trust me. But I've been doing this, God. I don't know how your way is going to work. And God's saying, trust me. Trust me. Do it my way. You may remember a time at the end after uh, whenever Jesus had been crucified and he came back and, and Peter and the disciples, once Jesus had died, and they, they were just kind of lost. They didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't know what to do. And so you know what they did? In John 21, they, they went fishing. Because when you don't know what else to do, the most godly thing you can do is go fishing. Right. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. Right. That was for Jimmy. What can I say? Amen. <laughs> But they, you know, they, they go fishing, they, they're out there fishing, they've been fishing. Guess how long they've been fishing? All night. And then Jesus shows up on the bank, and he hollers out to them, and he says, have you caught anything? And they say, we hadn't caught nothing all night. We've been out here all night. What, did, what was he doing? He just denied Christ. He, 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 he'd done all, all this has happened. He saw Jesus. It says this is the third time that Jesus had appeared to him. Yet he's still like this lost puppy. Can't forgive himself. Can't get past what he's done. And he finally says, you know what? I got to. Let, let's, let's go back to what we know. And they go fishing. And when they're out there doing what they know in their power and in their strength, nothing worked. And I want to tell you, everything that you try to do in your power and in your strength will not work without the blessing of God on it. And Jesus comes to the shore and he tells them, well, why don't you cast your nets on the other side? Oh, yeah, because that's where all the fish are hiding, right? So they're just like, you could just imagine deja vu kicking in for Peter. I've been here before. I've seen this happen before. <laughs> Peter didn't argue. He just took his net, threw it on the other side. And as the fish are coming in, John makes this statement. He's like, like he's got to identify Jesus. You know, he's like, that's Jesus. I, I bet this is one of those, those nah, duh moments, you know? Like Pete's out there, Peter's out there dragging in the fish. He's like, that's Jesus. Yeah, I got that. And then Peter has, he's, he's so dramatic, you know? He's so over the top. He, he puts his shirt back on because they've been out there. He, he puts his shirt back on. He jumps in the water and starts to swim the shore. I don't know about you, but they said the boat had to follow behind him. That's booty. So he, all this work, man, he's going to get there. He's wet. He's tired. He's, you know, he's been up all night. So, you know, he ain't, probably ain't got the best judgment. You know, I would have stayed in the boat and let's just row back, right? <laughs> You know, we're all going to the same place. But no, he's so dramatic. He jumps out and starts swimming to the shore. Oh, I'm going to do how to get there. You know, it, it, just over the top, Peter, man. I think that's why he's one of my favorite people because, man, so many times we're the same way. But we had, he, had a, he had a word from Jesus, and, and he tried to go back. Just as many as many of us do, we God comes into our life. He turns our life upside down. We start serving Him with everything we got, and some catastrophe hits. Something happens, and next thing you know, we're pulled to the side, and we're like, "Well, I'm just gonna go back to work. Gonna go do what I always did, and and hope it works out." Hey, did it work before? So why would it work now? But they waited on Jesus and Jesus comes after they've spent themselves all night and Jesus says try it now 
And they do it, and they pull in so much, so much they expected the nets to break. And we ain't talking guppies. They weren't, you know, pulling in little shad fish or minnows. They're pulling in big fish, it says. Hey, and if you want your big fish to come in, if you want your blessing to come in, it, you, you got to do life God's way. He'll let you spin and spin and spin and keep going and keep going and keep going and doing what you do. He'll let you keep doing it, and he'll stand on the shore and watch you. And eventually you're going to notice, oh, there's Jesus. And it's not by accident that he gets your attention. It's not by accident he stepped in Peter's boat. The great thing about all this is, in all of the denial, all that stuff that happened with Peter, Jesus comes right back, and he takes him right back to the same place he started. And he says, let's try this again. Let's try this again. You'll be out in the, in the water. You won't be able to catch a thing. And we'll start all over again. And you'll <laughs> cast your net. And you'll pull in the biggest <laughs> payload you've ever had. Now, this is the same guy who just got through denying Jesus, who has beaten himself up, can't forgive himself. And yet Jesus takes him right back to that place. Can you see the forgiveness in that? How it's just, we're, we're starting all over again, Pete. I know what you did. I, I know the mistake that you made. But we're starting fresh right here all over again. A new beginning in chapter 21 of John. Just like you had in Luke chapter 5. Before you ever walked with me. And I asked you to become fishers of men. Because that's what happened right after Luke 5. When they get back to the shore, he says, yeah, you think this is great. Come catch men with me. Fast forward to John 21, three years later. And he stays pulling in a big payload of fish. And what does he say? Do you love me, Peter? Do you love me? And we see this beautiful time where Jesus is reinstating Peter. And he's saying, you know what? I don't care about any of that stuff. All of those mistakes, you're forgiven. We're going to start from square one again. And we're going to take this all new all over just like the first day i asked you to follow me revelation chapter 2 talks about the church of ephesus and he, he and jesus is speaking to the church and he's telling them you've lost your first love you're doing lots of great things but you've lost you, you've you've walked away from me you've abandoned me you, you return to that love you had at first and this is what Peter's getting right here on the shore that day. I'm returning. The slate has been wiped clean. For many of us, we, don't, we, we hear that the slate's been wiped clean, but we can't. Oh, I just, I can't forget it, so how can God forget it? Hey, Isaiah tells us that he separates our sin as far as the east is from the west from us. Now, uh, east to west, I, that's a long ways, right? As far as you can go that way versus as far as you can go that way or that way and that way. But you get the point, right? That's how far he removes your sin from you. And yet, but I can remember it, so why doesn't he remember it? I, I hold it against me. How come he doesn't hold it against me? I'm telling you, today is a day of new beginnings. Today is a day where you get to start fresh, new, every day. I'm so thankful for that. Because every day that I mess up, I know I can start over tomorrow. You know, in Alcoholics Anonymous, they have the little chip. Man, I'd be cashing that chip in all the time. Ten-year chip, gone. I need another one. Give me, where's the one-day chip? That's, that's the one. Every day, I've, every day you've got to get up. And you've got to make that determination. Today is a new day. Amen. Don't matter what happened yesterday. Today is a new day. I'm going to carry on with him today. Today will be my new day. And today can be your new day. They used to say today is the first day of the rest of your life. What happened yesterday, it's old news. 
Man, I know some of, some of the people in this room had some crazy stuff happen in their past, and their past would start to catch up with them, made horrible mistakes, and then suddenly, the, you know, as they say, the chickens come home to roost, and, and, and next thing you know, you find yourself before a judge, and the judge is saying, ah, it's all good. No, no you should be sitting in a jail cell right now, and then now you're not. Why? Who does that? What happens in that, that moment? It's Jesus. And he's saying, today, we're new. We're new. And you get to go free. Because today is a new day. And it's a new you in Jesus Christ. I don't care how long you've been working. Maybe you've been up all night pulling an all-nighter at all sips, man. Maybe you, you've been on, on Morning Tower and you came dragging in here with your eyes feel like they're peeling out of your skull and you just, and you just yeah, this is the last place I want to be is sitting in church where the air conditioner don't work that good sometimes and it, and it gets hot because Debbie's crying about being cold and, and I got to pick on Debbie. And my eyes get heavy and I want to go to sleep and I'm t but you made that effort. You know, you're, you're Peter, man. You're Peter, and Jesus has just stepped into your boat. And it isn't by accident that you fought through that hard night, and now you're here. Because Jesus wants to have an encounter with you. And he wants to tell you, let's do it my way. My way will work. Let's do it my way. Oh, he'll keep letting you go. He'll keep letting you spin and do your thing. Until it doesn't work anymore and you, you finally realize and you, you have that moment where you're like, what do I do? And God's over there like, I told you to do it my way. <laughs> now you're just tired and broke. <laughs> and you have your Peter moment. And you're like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll do it his way. He said, try the other side. I'll go to the other side. He said, follow him. I'm going to follow him. Amen. He said, let's go talk to that guy at the, at the coffee shop tomorrow morning. <coughs> He's saying, tell my boss at work what's happening in my life. He said, I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... to... What is he telling you to do? What is he asking you to do? You say, well, I don't know. He hasn't asked me to do anything. Then listen. Let him. Today, when you decide, you, you, when you get to that moment, where you're like, I'm going to, I want to hear what God has to say. Talk to, ask God, speak to me. Show me what to do. And you know what's going to happen? It may not happen right at that moment, but you're going to be driving to McDonald's. Okay? You're going to be driving to McDonald's, and God's going to say, why don't you go by their house today? Why don't you go by this person? And God's going to put somebody, why don't you just, just pray for this person? You're going to see their face. You're going to be like, why am I thinking about this guy? And God's going to say, I want you to minister to them. You have to be ready. You've got to be ready. I don't care how tired you are. God uses tired people. He does. You, you want to see something that's happening in a ministry somewhere? It's because there are tired people making it happen. You want to go down to heart's desire? You want, you want to go see what God's doing over there? There's tired people there. There's people that are continually doing and doing and doing because God said to do it. Amen. In a few days, Mike and Shavonica are going to know what tired's all about. Yeah. And they're going to be so excited to be tired for what God is calling them to do. And it could be the same thing in your life. Because getting being tired for God is a different kind of tired. It's a blessing. There's a big payoff that's coming. Amen. No, you can keep doing it your way. Or you can get the biggest catch of your life by following Jesus. It's up to you. It's up to you. Like I said before, none of this was by accident. The reason you're here, the reason that you're in this moment is because God just got into your boat. He wants to speak to you. He wants to show you a better way. And all you've got to do is let him. Surrender to his leading. He may tell you, take another lap. He may tell you, wait just a little while for me to bring things into place. 
Maybe you're sitting here, you're thinking, man, I hear it all the time. I don't know what God wants me to do. I, God's showing, he, I know there's something coming, something that he's about to do. And then suddenly, God hits you upside the head with something. You're like, not that. <laughs> Are you sure I, that? That's what you want me to do? In the first, I remember the first time I started talking to Eddie about, you know, he kept coming to the altar. God's got something for me. There's something else. And it seemed like every time we'd pray on the altar, next was the word that kept coming. Next. Next. And, and we it just happened to minister, mention, have you ever thought about Spanish ministry? <laughs> what? No. Not even thinking, but, you know, I, I guess I'll think about it. You know, it, it gave me the Christian no. Well, you know what that is, right? I'll pray about it. I'll pray about that. All right, you know, well, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. And then next week he comes in, man, I keep getting, God keeps hitting me with all these signs. All this stuff keeps coming up that God's showing me. Hey, ask God. God, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? And it may be something completely different than anything. You may be thinking, God, I want to be this, this, I want to do this great thing in ministry. I want to do this thing. And he's going to tell you, why don't you go clean the toilet? Right, that's right. Holy cow. Where's the anointing in that one, right? What can I do for you, God? Hey, how about you just you, you hang around a little while? Pray for people. How about you just come early and welcome people? There's all kinds of God. I don't know what God's telling you. But I don't know if you've asked. And until you ask him, he'll let you just keep spinning, going and, and working and doing life your way. But as soon as you stop and you say, God, how do I do this? How do I make this work? And he'll give you that word. And he'll show you the way to go. He'll tell you the way to go. It doesn't matter the mistakes. It doesn't matter what you've done. I don't, you may say, man, I did more dope than anybody in this room. How could God use me? Well, I bet there'd be somebody to challenge that. Okay? <laughs> there have been a lot. Collectively, we've had a lot of drugs done in this room. I'm just going to say. <laughs> Nobody's drink as much as I've drank. Uh, you don't know that one. <laughs> Nobody's you've done as bad as that have been as bad as that. It doesn't matter. That's the whole point. It doesn't matter. The past is the past. Paul said, forgetting the past, I press on Amen. toward the goal of the higher calling. Yes. So forget that junk. Start new today. Just like Peter, God took all the mistakes he made, all the things that happened, he took them right back to square one. Throw your net on the other side, Peter. Oh, I bet that just dug into him like, oh man, what have I been doing? And as soon as he starts to, I knew he, he's pulling that fish. He's like, man. And then John's like, that's Jesus. He's like, no, duh. <laughs> he knew who it was. And you'll know who it is. When Jesus starts whispering in your ear, when he starts telling you, showing you things, guiding you, leading you, because you let him, you'll know. You'll know. Follow his lead. Go where he's taking you. Don't let go of the past. Don't worry about that. Today's a new day. Repent of that stuff. God, just tell God, God, I'm sorry for that mess I made. Get me out of this. And he'll do it. Today is your new day. Today is the day where you start from square one all over again. And you start to follow his lead now. So follow his lead. Go where he's taking you. Stop trying to call the shots. Let him be Lord today. And tomorrow when you get up out of bed, do the same thing all over again. My mom used to sing this song called One Day at a Time. I never really liked it. Thought it was kind of old. Hick sounding, but the message, the message, you can't control what's going to happen tomorrow, but you can start on today. And today you can set everything new 
right now in this moment, you can have your new beginning. Amen. Amen. Can we pray together? Lord, we come before you this morning. Lord, you see our lives. You see where we're at. And you know what we've done. And God, you still choose to forgive us. God, you set us free from our sin. You, you, your word says that you cast it as far as the east is from the west from us. You paid the price to set us free. And God, we're not here by accident. Today is our new beginning. Today is the day where we can start fresh again. Where everything can be made new all over again, regardless of what happened yesterday. God, we ask you to come into this place to, to, to fill us with your spirit, to forgive us of the sins that we committed so we can start fresh. God, I thank you for each one here that has that opportunity to start all over again. And God, if there be someone here that doesn't know you, I pray today is the day of their encounter with you, God. And God, if there are those here that we've had an encounter with you, we've asked you to come into our lives. But we've let the chaos of life get in the way and we started trying to do life our way again. And God, we're tired. We've been casting nets. We've been out working hard. We've been trying to make ends meet, and we just can't make it work. <laughs> Today, Jesus, we need a word from you. We need direction from you. We need to do life your way. So that you can make all of this work. We thank you, Lord. You know, if you're here today and you say, you know, I, I'm not sure if I know Jesus. I'm not sure if I died where I would go. Well, it's not by accident you're here. Jesus wants to climb into your boat today. He wants to come into your life today so that you can know where you will spend eternity. So you can know what, that, that he has saved you. You can ask him to forgive you of your sins, to come into your life, to guide you and lead you. And he'll do it. It's just that simple. It's way too easy, right? Way too easy. But it's like that on purpose. And maybe you're here today and you've been just struggling, trying to make ends meet. And you're just wondering, where is God in this? I can't see which way is up. My life is so chaotic. I, in my life, I, I've given my life to him, but now I just need him to tell me where to throw the net. Today can be your day. You can start all over fresh and new again. And he can restore you and make you new. Wherever you're at in there, Jesus is here. He's here to get into your boat. So if you need a touch from Jesus today, don't leave without touching him. Would you stand with me? I want to give you the opportunity you don't know Jesus, you can come to the front, man. I would love to introduce him to you. If you're afraid to come to the front, turn to somebody that's a believer around you. Grab somebody, ask them, do you know Jesus? And if they say no, then just go on to somebody else. Drag them with you. Say, so, well, come on with me. We're going to find somebody that knows Jesus, and we're going to ask him. Into our... Don't leave without knowing him today. But if you want to know Jesus, he's here for you. So maybe you're here and you've known Jesus. You've given your life to him. You, you've followed as good as you could. But man, life got turned upside down somewhere. Today. Today can be your new start. 
Today can be the day that you start to cast your net and it comes in full. If you'll just surrender to what he's asking you to do. I want to tell you, his way works. It does. So wherever you're at today, while they're playing, I want to invite you to come. You can come find a place to pray. If you want somebody to pray with you, we'd love to pray with you. But get a hold of Jesus today. Amen. So if you need a touch from Jesus, I want to invite you to come.